Finally, summer's here. Um, obviously, we're about a month behind. Uh, the weather has been atrocious, as you all know. I mean, we couldn't have had it any worse. We want to start to the year we've had. I mean, it was minus eight, then it was pouring down a rain, and then it went from, you know, sort of pouring down a rain to 20 degrees. The fish, it must knock them about so much, but finally, the weather is turned, and hopefully now the fishing will be a lot better. We're on Moreland's farm today, so what can you expect to catch when you come to Moreland's? Well, Moreland's been around a long time now. It's been about 40 years, and I grew up here as a child myself. We have six lakes, we have three stock ponds, and you can catch carp from 15 and upwards to you know small roach all the lakes are full so it's it's about you know what you want to catch really i mean you can fish pellets and you can catch your carp or corn and meat but sometimes you might want to have a day's fishing with you know skimmers and roach and stuff like that so i would bring casters and maggots so you can have a lovely day's fishing and catch whatever you want to catch really So my approach to this time of year would be obviously shallow fishing. Most of the fish are up in the water. They don't really want to be on the bottom. The F1s and other fish as well don't like high pressure. So do yourselves a favour. This is a bit of a tip actually. Get yourself a barometer on your phone. You can download an app and have a look at the high pressure. Do your homework, have a look at the air pressure. That has a massive effect on what fish how, and how they feed. So for me, if it's overcast, um, we've had a bit of rain or it's gone a bit cold through the night, you know, the fish would probably be closer to the bottom. And then if it's bright sunshine, they're going to be on the top. If it just drops a little bit overnight, then I would start at the bottom. If it's really sunny, then I would start on the top. I mean, you, you'll see fish anyway. The, the fish will show themselves, so they'll tell you where they are, and that will help you in your fishing as well. If you're unsure or you haven't got a barometer and you don't know what pressures are and stuff like that, always start on the bottom. For me, because if you're loose feeding over the top of your float and you're on the bottom and you're getting indications from, from fish or liners or possibly foul looking a few fish, then that's telling me that the fish are up in the water. Don't think, oh, I've got to start shallow. So start at the bottom, work your way up. If you start foul looking fish, um, then come off the bottom and go shallow. You've got to be willing to change the way you fish to catch fish. I see too many people going straight down the edge or a top kit. They won't always come to you. You have got to go to them. So, like I said, you need a waggler, you need a method. Most of the fish start out in the middle of the lake and then they progressively move in. So, for me, you've got to be willing to change the way you fish to catch more fish. How long do you wait for a bite? I mean, for me, you wouldn't wait that long. If, I, if I'm fishing and it's like sort of 10 minutes and I haven't had a bite, obviously I'd be, be chucking bait at the other lines anyway, but don't leave it too long because there might be another fish on the other line. So give it, you know, 10 minutes max. If you haven't had a bite, then have a try on the other line. If you haven't had a bite there, go back and just, just keep alternating between because at some point in the day, they will come into your peg. When I'm fishing shallow, um, and I'm, say if I was catching roach for instance, and, and then all of a sudden you can't catch a roach, generally there's a carp in your peg or a bigger fish in your peg. So what I would always have done anyway, I would have my carp rig ready, my shallow one ready, which I would then put in to try and catch whatever was in my peg. And then obviously if you catch a roach, then I would pick my other silver one. But normally when you're fishing shallow and then you can't get a bite at all, there's a reason for it. Yes, they could have gone and they're not coming back, but generally it's a bigger fish that's coming to your peg um, and obviously you either need to catch him or wait for him to move out and then you'll start catching again. My feeding approach would be little and often. The thing is with feeding is if you put too much in, you can't take it out. So I would always go very, very steady whether I'm fishing on the bottom or whether I'm fishing shallow. You can always up your feed when you get them in your peg, but generally when you up your feed too much, you'll start foul looking fish. So for me, little and often, whatever fishing you're doing. So next time you go out fishing, make sure you take all the gear to cover every option you've got to give yourself the best day's fishing.